What's up guys, welcome to another Logic Skateboard video and today we're tackling my most requested video so far which would be how to program a vest for Electric Skateboard. Uh, I'm not sure why I haven't done it yet. Uh, ever since I started making these videos that has consistently been requested. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I haven't made it but I'm super happy that I waited because now I get to show you guys how to do it on the new vest tool versus the older BLDC tool. The new vest tool, way more user friendly. Uh, makes the entire process a lot less intimidating. So for people who have never done this before, you're in luck. Super simple. I will do my best to show you guys how to do it right now. Before I get too deep into the tutorial, I do want to talk about the differences, the differences between a regular ESC and a VESC. Uh, a regular ESC, they're typically cheaper. They typically come with a remote. Um, they're not customizable at all. So usually what you get is what you get. Um, on the other hand, a VESC, a little more expensive doesn't come with a remote controller, uh, but very customizable and a lot higher quality parts like made within the whole everything. So uh, higher quality parts is where it's at, especially with ESCs, you want high quality components uh, so it lasts longer. Uh, before I really get into all the settings though, I do wanna show you guys what I'm using so you understand why I'm picking some of the values that I'm picking. Uh, obviously using a VESC because that's what this video is about. Um, for my motor, I'm using a 6355 180 kV uh, M boards motor. And for my battery, I'm using a 6S4P lithium ion battery pack. And then for my remote, I'm using the nano remote controller. Um, that's all. That's everything that I'm using right now. So uh, you guys can follow along. Um, regardless of what you're using, your battery is the most important. So uh, I will let you guys know what you should fill in when we get there. But anyways, uh, there are a couple of things you gotta do before you get started. Uh, you gotta take your VESC and plug the three phase wires into your motor. So if you find that your motor is spinning the wrong way, causing your board to go backwards throughout the build, just take any two of those phase wires and switch them and then your board will start going the other way. So yeah. So after you get that done, we are gonna want to connect the sensor wire of the motor to the sensor port on our VESC. You'll use that by uh, do that by using this wire. This It comes with your VESC, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, you just plug one side into the motor, the other side into the bottom port on your VESC. Bam, you're good. So now the last thing we gotta do is connect our receiver to our built-in servo cable. So the white goes to the signal space, and then red and black go to the plus and minus, and we wanna plug that into channel one. So before we do that now, before everything gets going, we do need to plug in our USB cable. It comes with the VESC, so you get one. But if you are using your own, be sure that you get one that uh, is able to transfer data. Because if you get one that's like kind of thinner, uh, a lot of them uh, only work for like power. So you can like charge things with it, but like it doesn't communicate with a computer. So if you're finding that it's not connecting to your computer, this is what you need. So. Plug the small end into your VESC like that. And then the regular size USB into your computer. We have everything connected up. We just need to uh, supply power to your VESC. Now I do want to let everyone know that uh, many of you guys who maybe know a little bit more what you're doing, uh, you guys might yell at me for using a battery to power my VESC while programming it. You're supposed to use a constant power supply to be sure that there will be no interrupted power uh, to your VESC while programming it. I've always used a battery and it's always been fine. I just want to put that out there that if you can get a uh, power supply hooked up there, be, it would be better, but I'm going to use a battery. So once we have everything powered up, we will get onto the computer and we'll open up Best Tool. I do want to talk about the Best Tool really quick. Uh, it's only for Windows, Linux, and Android, which, so if you're a Mac user like I am, uh, I thought I was kind of screwed. So. Uh, I found a tutorial on how to run Windows on Mac. I installed Windows on a USB drive and I'm just running Windows off this USB drive. So I will link the uh, tutorial in the description below for all you Mac users. If you have a PC, you're good. Uh, you'll have no worries, but if you're a full Mac person like I am, then you'll have to do this quick workaround first. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the tutorial link is in the description. Um, the download software for the best tools in the description, where I got my VESC and batteries and all that, that's all in the description so you guys can follow along. Uh, so yeah, so we'll pop open the best tool right now. All right, great, so now we're in, uh, there's a three main buttons. Uh, to start, we're just gonna hit this little connect button. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see some green uh, highlighted text, that's when you know you are connected. So now we're gonna hit the motor setup wizard. Uh, hit next, and yes, we'll start from our uh, default. Cool, so now, 
There's a couple of different uh, modes you can run this in. Uh, there's BLDC, DC, and FOC. Today we're gonna run FOC. Uh, this motor and VESC uh, combination works wonderful in the FOC, which is the quieter, more efficient version. So yes, that's the more desired version usually. So we're gonna hit next, we'll hit okay. So this next window is where we set our current limits. That's kind of how much power the, the motor is gonna take. It's how much uh, amperage we're gonna pull from the battery. All that stuff is here. So it's very important. Um, the, the motor current max and the motor current max brake, that's your acceleration and braking power, 60 and negative 60, those work totally fine, so we'll keep that. For the battery current max, uh, for this battery, the kind of the, the max discharge is 40 amps. I'm gonna go 35 amps just to be safe, just to kind of cut my battery a break here a little bit. Um, so now the, the battery current max regen is how much power is going back into your battery as you're braking. I definitely don't need to put 40 amps back in the battery. I'll do about negative 10, that's pretty safe. Um, I don't need, you don't need to do a too much. You don't wanna charge it faster than your battery wants to be charged, so negative 10 is fine. Um, if you can mess with that a little bit, maybe get a little extra range, but negative 10 seems to work out just fine. So we'll hit next. And uh, just letting you know that we need to set uh, the, the cutoff charge. So this part's really easy. Uh, however many cells you're working with, so I'm using a 6S4 piece, so a six cell battery. If you're using 10 or eight or whatever, put that number right here into the cell count. So I'll just click the little arrow until it says six. Great, hit apply. So now you'll see these values up here change. Um, 20.4 and 18.6 are good. Uh, you can mess with that a little bit. You can drop this uh, battery voltage cutoff a little lower if you want a little extra range, but that's good. I'm gonna hit next. So now it's asking us uh, what kind of sensor mode we're gonna use. Uh, if you don't have a sensor, hit sensor list, but we are using hall sensors. So we're gonna hit hall sensors and hit next. Okay, this part looks a little confusing. It's it's not, there's four little buttons. The, there's a question mark, which kind of tells you what's going on here. You can hit okay, ignore that. Um, the next button you hit, uh, it, it's gonna kind of do a couple things to the motor. So we're gonna hit the button and then hit okay. Once you hit okay, we're gonna hear a bunch of noises. It's gonna sound really bad and not a pleasant noise, but it's fine, so just hit okay. And wait for your motor to make some noise. Great, so now you can see that there's some uh, green values pop up right in there. So now we'll move on down the arrow and hit the next button. Now this button will make your motor spin, so make sure everything's clear, nothing's gonna go flying uh, if it's too close to your wheel, so I'm gonna hit this, we're gonna hit okay, it gives you a warning about this, so in case you forget, hit okay, and wait for your motor to spin up. Bam, good. And then we'll hit apply, and then hit next. Next, and finish. Cool. So, that's basically it. You've kind of done everything that you need to do with your motor. Now we need to uh, calibrate your remote, because it's not 100% calibrated, it may work, from now on, it, it could work uh, just fine, but just to be sure, we're gonna go to the next button that says Input Setup Wizard App. Hit that, hit Next, and yes. Uh, this part's pretty easy. We have a single VESC, so we'll select that. If you're using multiple, you'll select one of the other options. Um, now it's gonna ask what kind of uh, remote we have. We're using a remote, so that's the top option. If you're using like a throttle for an e-bike, you'd hit the next option or any of the other options, but we're using the RC receiver, so we'll hit next. So now, as you hit the throttle forward, you'll see this, turn your remote on. Gotta turn your remote on. Once you turn that on, it pairs. Once you throw the throttle forward, you'll see this line, it's at 100%, and down, negative 93%. Okay, so basically what we wanna see is 100% up and 100% down. So I'm getting, only getting 93%, so I'd only have 93% braking power at this moment. That's fine with me, but I am gonna show you guys how to fix it in case it's not correct. So, the way you'd fix this, so sometimes you'd hit forward and maybe only say 60%, which is a problem because you wanna go more than 60% speed. Uh, so, you would just take this little number that's hovering right here, it's about 2.05, and plug that into pulse length end, 2.05, awesome. And then you hit down, throttle down, so full brake power and you'd copy this number, 1.03, great, and plug that into the pulse length start, 03, great. So now I'm getting negative 99 and 100. Negative 99, that's fine with me. You can really mess with it to get it to 100. Perfect, cool. And we'll hit next. 
next, and finish. So at this point, you're all good. If I hit my throttle, you'll hear the motor spin up. Perfect, so everything's working. You can turn your control off, and now make sure you do this. Uh, you don't wanna just pull your VESC out without disconnecting it. So up in the top right hand corner, you'll see this unplugged looking icon. Click that. You'll see down here in the bottom right, it'll say not connected. That means you're good. We can pull the USB out of the VESC, disconnect the power. Perfect, cool. And then we're done. That's everything right there. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. You can drop them in the uh, comments below. I try to hit every single comment I get. So uh, if you leave a comment, I'll do my best to reply. Uh, again, all the links for the downloads and tutorials that I followed to get everything on the Mac working is in the description, uh, the VESC and everything. All the tools I'm using right now are in the description as well. Um, if you're new around here, you should subscribe. We're doing a lot of electric skateboard stuff. Um, try to keep up with all the educational electric skateboard stuff as best I can. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.